Let's pray. Father God, we come again to the study of your word and we acknowledge the Bible to be your inspired, inerrant, infallible word. Lord, we acknowledge that the scriptures testify of you, so we ask that you would be the object of our study. We also acknowledge that the Holy Spirit will lead and guide us into all truth. And so we pray today that by your Spirit you would guide us in this study. And Father, we recognize that your word will accomplish what you send it to do. And so we want to do our part that your will would be done in our hearts and our lives. We'll be sure to give you all the praise and the honor for it. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen. Well, we're studying bodybuilding, strengthening the body of Christ, looking at the one another verses in the Scripture. Turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 10. It's the next one another command that we're going to be looking at today. We're going to divide this verse into three parts as we look at it, but let me read it first. It says, Be kindly affectioned one to another, with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. I'm going to read it again. Be kindly affectioned one to another, with brotherly love, in honor, preferring one another. We're going to see the first aspect of this verse, B. Then we're going to look at with, and lastly, in. First, he says, be kindly affectioned one to another. When the Lord tells us to be or to do something, it's an indication that it's not automatic. This doesn't just happen on its own we're going to have to be engaged in following this command. Be kindly affectioned one to another. We should, we should have loving affection. We should be loving tenderly. The, the idea is to be prone to love. It's, it's not to be cold or to be standoffish in our attitude. It's it describes good manners that are fitting a household. Now, that poses somewhat of a problem for most of us. I hate to confess, but I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, can relate. One would think that in the household, that's where best behavior would happen. Amongst those who are related, amongst those who love one another. But oftentimes we extend all of our focus and our energy and our efforts out in the public. And then when we come home, maybe we're emotionally drained, maybe we're tired. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe we're comfortable. If that's the case, we're too comfortable. Oftentimes, unfortunately, it's in the family unit that we're not on our best behavior. It's We get lax and we, we make comments. We pick on one another. We poke at one another. The Lord is telling us in His household, to be kindly affectioned one to another. I want to read a passage of Scripture. It's in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. This is repeated. He says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Be kind one to another, tender-hearted, Kindly affectioned, being, being kind to one another. We should always be on our best behavior. 
But I challenge you, I challenge myself, my family, and in God's family. Let's be at our best there. When no one really sees except us, let's not let down our guard. Let's not lower our standards. Let's not lessen our behavior. Let's be at the top of our game amongst one another. That's what's being talked about here. That's what we should be. We should be. Now notice in the verse, he moves from be, be kindly affection one to another, to with. With. He, he doesn't just say be kindly affectioned one to another. He says with brotherly love. With brotherly love. Now we're looking at the body analogy in this study. Body building. Strengthening the body of Christ. We are members one of another. And Paul uses the analogy of the body being led by the Holy Spirit to describe that. But that analogy only goes so far. And that's why we have other analogies in the scripture. Another one being the family. We are the family of God, the household of faith. And they're different, really. They're, they're interconnected, but they're different because the body analogy speaks to membership. We're, we're members, in particular, of the body. Where the family analogy speaks to relationship. The body analogy speaks to function, how we operate as one unit. But the family analogy speaks of interaction between ourselves. The body speaks to the physical aspects of who we are in Christ. The family speaks more to the psychological aspects or the emotional aspects. And so he adds this idea with brotherly love. You know that the word brothers or brother literally means from the same womb. We're, we're, we have a common heritage as believers. That's why competition in the church is so awful. Because it's, it's, a, it's a denying of one of the most fundamental truths that is taught in the Scripture. The disciples were always, who's the greatest? And it still happens today. There ought not be any competition within the body of Christ, because we are all in Christ. He is the only begotten Son. He is number one. Not us. You and I are not competing for second place. We share a common heritage. As a matter of fact, let me read to you Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. Having predestinated us, we're not striving to get there. We're not racing one another to get there. We're not arm wrestling one another to get there. We're not competing against one another. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. He's the only begotten. The rest of us are adopted. I'm no better than you. You are no better than me. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. How? Not by your merit or my merit. Not because I'm better than you or you're better than me. Not my GPA is more than yours. None of that. By Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. He did it. I want to read that again. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children, by Jesus, by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. We're to be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. With brotherly love. Now, I, this idea of being brothers in Christ, it's all throughout the scripture. It, it's, it's all throughout the New Testament. I want to read several passages, if you will, to just drive that point home for us. I'm going to begin reading in 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 9 and 10. Look what he says. Paul writing to the Thessalonian believers, he says, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. 
I, you don't need me to tell you about it. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. Notice this. And being, and indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. I don't need to tell you. And as a matter of fact, you're doing it. Many of us would say that of ourselves. I know, and I'm doing it. But wait, we're not done with verse 10. He says, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. More and more. There's never a time where we say, I've got this brotherly love thing figured out. I've done it. I've arrived. No. We're to be steadily increasing more and more in that love. Look at Hebrews 13, verse 1. Hebrews 13, verse 1, he says this, Let brotherly love continue. Not only should we be increasing more and more in our brotherly love, we should be gaining momentum. It should be continuing, never ceasing, never stopping. Let brotherly love continue. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart, Fervently. Unfeigned means sincere, genuine, with a pure heart. We're not to fake it. We should have unfeigned love of the brethren. Look at chapter 3, verses 8 and 9. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that you are thereunto called that you should inherit a blessing. We should be about blessing one another because we're brothers. Last verse in 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if these things be in you and abound, we should be abounding in it, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now back to our verse. He says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in, in honor, preferring one another. In honor. That word honor there has the idea of valuing according to price. Valuing according to price, honoring one another, recognizing the value of one another. And this is that value in Ephesians, back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7 says this, In whom we have redemption, meaning we were purchased through His blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. What value do you have? You were purchased with the blood of Christ, with His very life. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. I must never forget that. God values you so much that Jesus shed His blood to purchase your soul. I should honor you because of that. Because God values you, I should value you in honor. And then He says this, preferring one another. Preferring one another. That in the Greek literally means to show the way. To show the way. Now, I can't help but to think of those goofy gophers in the cartoons when I was little. Chippendale, I believe, is their name. 
And they were constantly saying to one another, no, but, but after you. No, 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 but after you. But, no, but after you. No, after you. They were, they were trying to outdo one another in love. And if, if we are going to compete with one another, it should be in this. In honor preferring one another. Trying to outdo one another in love. No, 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 but after you. You, you, you go first. Show the way. I want to read our passage one last time. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We hear it. We receive it. We ask for your grace and your help. Let it find its way into our heart, into our soul, into our very spirit, and let it work its way out in our lives, in our interaction with one another. We surrender ourselves to your will. We acknowledge that this is your will. Help us to be obedient. We ask, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.